Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, today we have, uh, as part of Careers Week and our Careers Week program, I hope you've been watching some of the alumni that we've had speaking. Um, today we have Matt Owen, who is of the class of 2012. <laughs> Hello, Matt, um, who uh, did physiotherapy. And Matt is going to tell us about his uh, I, quite unusual, varied, exciting path that he's taken since graduating from St. George's uh, today. So I've got a few questions to ask you, Matt. Um, so I will start firing away. But uh, yeah, so do you want to um, just uh, tell me a little bit about your um, role at the moment and how it's changed over the last year? Yeah, sure. So I'm currently working as a maths teacher at a, school in, a secondary school in Wigan. Um, I'm working as a lead maths teacher, so I have, as well as kind of responsibilities of the students that I work with, I also work a lot with the other teachers in the department um, and the wider school looking at kind of teaching techniques and teaching styles and trying to incorporate a lot of educational research into the classroom practice, mm -hmm. uh, which I guess is a nice little throwback to physiotherapy in lots of ways with, you know, evidence-based practice being such an important part of the medical world. Um, so yeah, it feels like there's definitely a kind of strong link between those aspects of the physiotherapy course and uh, yeah, the role that I'm, I'm working in at the moment. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah. So tell us. So you've actually you're now you're now in teaching. So um, how long have you been in teaching for? Um, so I've been in teaching for three uh, four years actually now. Um, so I had a bit of time after I left St George's. I graduated in 2012, as you said. And then went on to work in the students' union. So I ran for SU president and got that, uh, thankfully, which was a really nice year. Uh, that extended my time in London um, a little bit as well. Uh, after that, I moved up to a remote Scottish island called the Isle of Col, uh, where I spent two years working for an educational charity called Project Trust, um, which is a really amazing organisation that works with young people and gets them um, living and working overseas for 12 months. Um, so I spent two years there and then after that joined the Teach First programme and um, so moved to Liverpool um, where I've been ever since. Um, yeah, joined the Teach First programme uh, to train as a maths teacher. Um, it's a really nice programme, I don't know if you know anything about it, but it's uh, um, an educational charity really working on eradicating education and equality. Um, and it places trainee teachers in some often quite like challenging circumstances in tough schools in inner cities. Um, but doesn't it kind of you, you train on the job so you get paid and train at the same time um, and you just kind of straight in at the deep end as a teacher after six weeks training over summer mm. um so that's a real kind of adventure of a, of a program i would say mm. um, and that's how i got into teaching so that was four four years ago now so what actually made you obviously you did physiotherapy as your degree and you had all those amazing experiences some of them with young people but what actually made you decide to go into teaching and, and when did that happen was that straight after your degree or was that further down the line um well i wanted it was more the program rather than teaching that really drew me in to begin with and i'd heard about teach first a long time ago when my sister uh, did the program so even when I started physiotherapy I certainly joined the course thinking that I would go on to be a physiotherapist um, but just I guess things happened and, and turned out the way they did I really loved my time at the SU I always wanted to go and uh, work for the organization that I mentioned earlier um, and I'd always had my eye on Teach First like I say ever since my sister had done it and um, I think their values and the fact that they work in these kind of tough inner city schools and particularly with um, kind of more deprived areas and, and, and in challenging circumstances really drew me to the programme. Um, so I knew that I wanted to complete the programme. And I guess even going into that, I didn't know necessarily that I would be a teacher long term. Um, it's a two year programme and I kind of fell in love with teaching over the course of those two years. And that's very much where I've stayed and where I kind of want to continue to work in that area. Um, so it was more by chance, I guess, in some ways that I got into teaching, um, but feel that it really kind of suits me and and I've really enjoyed working in, in that area ever since. So, and before you did that, did you get any advice from anyone about your next move and, and going into teaching after a physiotherapy degree, after a health degree? Um, well, certainly my sister, uh, like I said, my sister had done the programme and she obviously knows me really well. Um, and she always said, you know, I think you'd really suit the programme and suit the classroom. And I think you'd really enjoy being a teacher. And um, so she was certainly one of the kind of big influences that pushed me towards that. Um, I've certainly met 
other people who'd, who'd done the program and, and spent time in classrooms and, and had really enjoyed it. And they seemed to, the things that they were saying just seemed to kind of match the things that I look for in work and the things that I enjoy doing. Um, so yeah, I guess there was a few conversations that maybe kind of pushed me towards it. Um, but like I say, it was very much the kind of, the organization and the program that, that drew me in. Um, I thought that their kind of morals and what they're trying to achieve as an organization is, is really interesting and really quite powerful. So to kind of get involved in that was a big motivation as well as just becoming a teacher. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a very interesting way of going into it. Yeah. It's a very popular program, the Teach First program, isn't it? Um, for those just coming out of university. Um, and so, um, as far as the kind of physiotherapy degree is concerned, um, how did you find that adjustment from, from being on a degree program, um, perhaps thinking about going into a very specific career? Um, how, how was it adjusting to that? And do you have any advice for those that are considering making a change from something perhaps that's quite vocational in their degree into, into something totally different? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about my career so far is that it's been quite varied and I really enjoy the fact that I haven't done the same thing kind of over and over and that I've tried different things. Um, and I think like so much of, of what you do at university on a physiotherapy course or any other course is applicable to so many different areas. Um, I guess physiotherapy, the program was quite intense. There was a lot of contact hours. Um, you're also, you know, learning to make connections with people. You're you know, lots of what physiotherapy is about is kind of training people and teaching people to look after and manage their own injuries. And obviously there's a big teaching aspect in that. Um, and so that was very ap applicable to the program. Um, and I think, yeah, the biggest thing would just be making those connections with people. As a physiotherapist, you've got to earn people's trust and respect really quickly. You've got to want them to, to kind of take that leap of faith if it's their first time walking after a hip operation or something like that. They want to trust you to be able to do that. Um, and it's very similar in the classroom, you know, you've got to earn the respect of the kids and, and, and they need to trust you and, and kind of want to go with you and on that journey um, with you in the classroom. So I think there is a lot of crossover. And I think often you'd be surprised at how much, yeah, the skills that you can learn on, on something that seems very um, kind of focused and, and like say very kind of centered around a certain vocation can be taken out of that context and applied to different scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, I can see that. So we, we try to, um, I'm obviously one of the careers consultants at St. George's, but we try to encourage the students to look at the transferable nature of the degrees they're on, which can give them access to so many different poss possible pathways because they've, they've just developed so much within those skills, like you say, of communication, working with others, um, being professional, professional mm -hmm. conduct. Um, and, and also working within the, the NHS and showing those values, which are often replicated in other organisations and their values too. Um, so um, what would you say, um, Matt, at the moment then, um, are the most rewarding things about your role? You mentioned at the beginning that you have decided to stick with teaching. You found it really did suit you, fit with what you wanted out of your career. Tell us a little bit about what you think are the most rewarding parts about your, your current role. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, I think first and foremost, like for me, just working with young people is amazing. You get so much like energy and enthusiasm just walking around the school. Uh, the longer you spend there, the more you get to know the pupils, the more you kind of learn how to feed off them and they learn how to feed off you and to engage with them and, you know, how to motivate different pupils and how different pupils will respond to different tasks and different kind of challenges that you set them. Um, you know, the moments of success are amazing and the highs that you have with students. Uh, there's some lows as well when students might approach you upset or, or having difficult times um, either in school or at home. Um, and yeah, I think just like just being in that kind of really fast paced environment where there's so much energy um, from, from the young people is, is amazing. And I absolutely love that. Um, I have to say it's been one of the big struggles, particularly since January with the closing of schools again, mm -hmm. um, has been kind of missing out on that interaction. And it is possible to recreate it kind of to a point remotely and through kind of online lessons and, and using Microsoft Teams and that sort of thing. Um, but it certainly is a big miss and I can't wait, you know, fingers crossed that when the announcement's made next week that schools will be kind of reopening soon and getting back into those interactions. Because um, yeah, that is the kind of most special part about being a teacher for sure. Um, I really enjoy the other aspect of my job in terms of 
I mentioned earlier about the educational research and I kind of really thrive off kind of reading about something or looking something up and then putting into practice in the classroom, seeing how that works, maybe discussing that with colleagues, um, sharing kind of insight with colleagues and saying, oh, you know, you're having this issue, maybe you should try this that I found out about. Um, and I think that's really rewarding as well. And it's really easy to, to take like a snippet of information and just kind of put it into the classroom. And, you know, you could read something one night and be doing it the next day. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really nice as well and that you can really kind of measure those impacts and see how students respond to them um, in the short term and see how kind of results change in the longer term using different techniques. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant role. There's lots to kind of motivate and excite you, but I guess those are some of the most rewarding aspects for me. Well, it sounds great. It sounds that you're very consistently positive about it because sometimes you hear a lot of bad pressure press about the pressure that teachers are under and things like that, which I'm sure they are. Um, are there any kind of parts of the job that you feel you've just got to accept that are quite challenging, but, you know, obviously on balance, there's a lot of pros with it. I think when you're looking at any career, it's always important to familiarise yourself with the downside, which I suppose where Teach First is brilliant, isn't it? Because you're actually put through your paces very quickly in real life situations to see whether you like it or can adjust to it or whatever um so what, what would you say are the challenges or have been uh, well, i guess all teachers will talk about marking um like marking is never the most fun aspect um but actually there's lots of kind of ways around that and ways of kind of marking slightly differently um, that can kind of reduce workload um i think the other thing for me is that i feel as though you can't really go into a day without being prepared like you have to know what you're going to teach. You have to know how you're going to teach it. Um, I think you can maybe kind of get away with a lesson if you're not prepared, but it's not really, I don't think it's, it's helping you. It's certainly not helping the kids. So I think like that feeling of having to be prepared is, is quite tough and quite intense. Um, and I think you get kind of rewarded for that with some really long holidays and time where you can kind of do the things that you want to do away from work. Um, but I find that, yeah, every day you have to be prepared. And that sometimes means, spending time at the weekend working it might mean that you are spending time the night before kind of just making sure that everything is ready for the next day um but yeah you can't just go into work and kind of have a bit of an off day and think oh you know what i'll just catch up with this tomorrow and um, which i think there is maybe that leeway sometimes in lots of roles but it's, yeah i don't think you get that in the classroom you have to be kind of on it and ready every day yeah yeah yeah. Good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> Our children are in such safe hands. That's great. Yeah. Um, so um, also, um, yes, you took time out in um, 2019 to cycle 15,000 miles from Sydney to London, um, although the pandemic impacted your plans halfway yeah, through. Not, not quite as it turns out. Yeah. Yeah. So so what were some of the benefits to you of taking a career break? Oh, well, um, so many. I mean, I've been, so before I went to university, I had two years off. I spent a year living and working in a juvenile detention centre in South Africa. Uh, after that, I went to France and spent six months um, working in a ski resort. Um, so I had a bit of time before university. Um, I've used kind of summer holidays to travel and, and do that sort of thing as well. Um, but yeah, I guess this was the first big kind of career break, um, which felt a little bit kind of nerve wracking, handing my notice um, at my old job and saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, and, and spend a year doing something something else um, and they were really great about it actually and said you know we can kind of make sure that there's something available for you when you come back um, but it actually turned down in the end just because I thought it was a good opportunity to to try something new and try something fresh and um, but yeah the benefits are, are so much I think like one of the biggest things is just it's a huge talking point like I know that like purely professionally there's so many people at my work who are really kind of interested in that and it's just mm. kind of opens the door they really want to find out about it and then you get conversations and then they lead to maybe some more professional conversations afterwards mm. but people are really keen to just find out like what was that like what, what you know how did you manage that where did you stay what, how did you how many miles did you cover all those sorts of things um and then obviously there's so many other benefits in terms of like just testing yourself a little bit seeing kind of what you're made of what how you react when the chips are down and you're kind of a bit stranded or stuck and um, what you know how are you going to deal with those situations because you've only got kind of yourself to, to look at in, in those moments um so much about kind of meeting people and understanding more about different cultures and um, i think certainly within the school context it's something that i'm really proud of and that you know i feel like those sorts of attitudes about not being too afraid of things going wrong, being able to kind of step out of your comfort zone to try something different. 
and to want to explore and to meet people and to try new things are all things that we should be kind of educating kids about and, and educating young people about to kind of have that same urge to to try something to not worry too much if if things do go a little bit wrong where you know they will that will happen at times and it's about how you deal with those kind of moments and how you get over those challenges that, that really kind of make you and um, so I really enjoy like talking to my students about the trip and that they love hearing about it and telling them different bits and pieces they'll often try and you know persuade me to have five minutes at the end of a lesson where we can just ask questions about things like that um, and I you know I don't do that every lesson but I think that that is actually some quite worthwhile time for, for young people um, and particularly in lots of these kind of um, deprived areas where often you know it can be quite alarming actually that students maybe haven't left their neighbourhoods before, don't even know how far away from Liverpool maybe Manchester is and feel that that's almost an unmanageable distance that you would travel. Um, so to, to kind of show people that the whole world is out there and that, you know, they could potentially kind of take some time at some point to go and do something, maybe not on the same level, but maybe just going to that nearby city to kind of expanding their um, realm a little bit, I think is really, really important. Um, so yeah, I think there's lots of benefits to doing things like that, both kind of professionally on a wider basis and for me kind of personally in my profession in terms of the impact that it can have on the young people that, that I work with. Yeah, it seems like it's got so many benefits, doesn't it? It's, it's created interest in you being able to bond with others, but also for the young people as well. Um, talking of your resilience, so you talking about when you've having to do that and you can't always predict what's going to happen you've got to deal with difficult situations things that are going to uh really show your your uh, grit and determination and your patience in a situation how do you resilience is a big thing at the moment not only for young people but i think particularly for people working within health settings but but in any any line of work and i think particularly at the moment we're all having to become a little bit more resilient because of the current situation but um how have you got any tips about resilience for the student uh, body at the moment or just in terms of how you, what you've learned through those experiences about being resilient well i guess i mean the biggest thing is just like to not give up like ultimately um you are in control of of the things that that, that you do and that's all that you are, are in control of so there will be things that happen outside of your control there will be things that are, are awful that happen things that are tough to take things that knock you down um, but you can only re you can only be responsible for, for your reaction to those things and sometimes it's fine to feel a bit down and to feel a bit fed up about things but, but ultimately it's on you to try and kind of turn those around and try and make those those sorts of things work for you and um, I think like sharing experiences with someone is a really nice way of doing that and um, when I did my trip I did it with my girlfriend who I actually met at St George's we've been together for kind of 10 years or so now um, and you know having that person that you can kind of just look at when things are like horrific and just kind of smile at each other and think yeah this is really bad but it's going to be worth it and we're going to get through it um, is really nice and you know maybe not everyone has that kind of specific partner in their life but has friends or family or someone that they can kind of just share those kind of really bad moments with um, and certainly that really helps you to, to kind of get over them uh, I think like having goals having long-term aspirations is really important as well like we always knew that our plan was to cycle all the way home and obviously because of coronavirus in the end we, we had to cut it short at 9,000 miles which you know still is a massive achievement we feel and we're so really proud of, of what we did um, but yeah, you know, things will go wrong in that sort of huge goal that you've got. Um, but staying focused on that goal and thinking, you know, this is all part of the process, this is all part of the journey. Um, and making kind of short-term goals within that, so you'll have your goal of just where you're going to get to for lunch, where you're going to get to for the end of the day, where you're going to get to for the end of the week. And so breaking it up into kind of sizable chunks. But, but yeah, when things are down, sometimes just looking back and thinking, actually, what are we trying to achieve here? And thinking about that long-term goal be a really good way of just kind of switching yourself back into kind of that mode and thinking actually you know I can't give up on this I can't let this go I need to keep pushing through and keep trying mm -hmm. uh, and yeah things will like change you know things will always kind of go up and down and, and but they will get better eventually um, mm -hmm. yeah 
Okay, thank you very much for that. I think that's really, really useful and insightful. And, and a consistent message that we're getting from all of the people that we're speaking to is about only control what you can control. Um, and and yeah, like you say, to keep persevering and things, it's just life really, things will go up and they'll go down. Yeah. Kind of deal with it. Um, no, thank you very much. Um, I'm quite interested actually, because aside from your cycling and aside from you changing from physiotherapy to teaching, you've also done all of those lovely, interesting things like, you know, like you say, working on the youth project in, in the Hebrides. Um, you mentioned working in a juvenile. Detention centre. Detention centre. And, yeah. and then in France again, was it, did you say somewhere in France too? Yeah, in a, in a ski resort. That was, um, that was really fun. It was, um, it was a really big contrast from the year before when I'd been volunteering in South Africa and working in a really pretty intense project that um, certainly taught me a lot about resilience and a lot about a lot about everything really. Like um, one of the biggest things that I got from that was about kind of behaviour, and I think that's something that stood me in really good stead, both for the physiotherapy course and for teaching and, and everything else that I've done, and, and understanding that you know behaviour is just so complex and what drives us to do the things that we do isn't necessarily what we expect it to be and the kind of experiences that we've had when we're growing up experiences that we've had as adults and everything else in between will impact how everyone responds to different things that, that happen to them um and so yeah that, that year in South Africa was, was really useful in terms of that and understanding a lot more about yeah how people behave and then going to France was, a, was, to be honest, a lot more kind of relaxed. It was really fun. I worked in a kitchen, um, just like chopping veg, bit of food prep as a kitchen porter um, by day or by kind of evening. And, and then I'd ski all day. Uh, that's something that I've always been really passionate about and wanted to spend a lot of time doing. Um, so I spent, yeah, six months basically skiing every day, working in a, in a kitchen at night. Um, and yeah, meeting lots of really interesting people, kind of developing myself in terms of, like the kind of skill of, of skiing and that sort of stuff, but also, yeah, just like meeting more new people and interacting with people, spending more time away from home, which I think is always uh, a challenge, but but is always quite useful. And I think like in those moments when you're kind of relying on yourself a little bit more, I think you yeah you can learn a lot about yourself and, and, and benefit a lot from those experiences, I think. Yeah, and I'm sure you were very popular on the slopes <laughs> after skiing with your physiotherapy background. <laughs> Well, yeah, unfortunately, that was before, so I didn't have that knowledge. Oh, that was oh, that's um, but I was, I was, I was applying <laughs> for. I had to, had to actually fly back um, from France for my university in Georges. And oh, one okay. of the lecturers um, who actually ended up being my tutor was a really big skier. So, like the first thing when I walked in, she was like, "I think she noticed my tan lines from my ski goggles." So, oh, we've been away, um, and that was really nice. Again, one of those examples of where like doing things a little bit different, maybe just creates those bonds, creating things that you can talk about. And it meant that the interview was like immediately quite relaxed and quite easy. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we all, it started on about skiing and then went on to all the other things that, you know, you'd ask everyone in that interview, but, but it was really nice and it just broke the ice really nicely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, an example of, of how useful those sort of experiences are in that. Yeah, no, it's great. Well, you've obviously been very courageous in putting yourself out there with things like the South African project as well. So that was prior to your studies as well, was it in a kind of like a gap year before you came? Yeah, to it was. Um, so that was when I was 18, um, which, uh, yeah, so it feels like a long, long time ago now. Um, but yeah, it was actually with the organisation that I then went to work for in Scotland. Um, so hence kind of why that was on my radar and why that was something that I wanted to go and do, to go and live in, in Scotland on that. A very small island with only 200 people mm -hmm. um so so yeah that was something that i applied for kind of when i was at school decided that i wanted to take that little bit of time out um and 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 yeah i was placed in that project which was amazing like really really tough um really challenging experience uh, particularly as an 18 year old like i think you know if i'm completely honest about it i was maybe like a little bit out of my depth of points in that um, but that really did kind of push me and test me and, and I ultimately like was made me realize that I can do a lot more than maybe I thought I could to begin with. And that by, yeah, like just trying these things and pushing yourself to do these things that you can, yeah, you can often kind of surprise yourself with what you can kind of overcome and the challenges that you can, can 
an outcome and what you can achieve yeah yeah no absolutely I think it's very impressive and I think it's just testament again and I think we've had a lot of people talking about all the different experiences that they've had that all lead in some way or form the direction that they end up going in in some way because it's given them either skills or insights or develop their passion for a particular area and I can obviously see that although the physiotherapy side was something that you um, chose to do for your degree that you didn't that didn't um, close any doors, didn't limit you. You just felt quite open to, to explore whatever it was that you felt um, was right for you afterwards. Um, and, on, and on that, Matt, is there anything, any advice you'd give to students? So imagine those that are graduating either this year, um, perhaps those that might be, you know, have struggled slightly or, or, the, or those that um, are thinking about all of their options. What advice would you have for any students coming out in, into the world now after being in, in education? Um, I mean, um, a tough time. Yeah, I guess the big thing would be to just say that there's no rush, like there's no pressure, even if you feel like, oh, you know, I'm out of university now, I'm, I'm, I'm older, I'm an adult, I need to know what I want to do. And um, that really isn't the case. Like, I feel like I've maybe kind of stumbled across what I want to do now, but. Um, that's not to say it's not necessarily what I'm going to do forever and it's not to say that it won't be the last thing that I kind of do professionally as a teacher um, and that yeah it's not it's not wrong and it's not kind of bad to not necessarily know exactly what you want um, but I think if you are in that place where you're not entirely sure um, you just want to try and get as many kind of rich and varied experiences as you can so whether that's um, if you're in a position where you can kind of volunteer whether it's getting work in, in different places um, I think like you yeah, you might think looking at kind of my experiences that they're not really linked at all. But I think when you talk about that kind of common thread is that there has been a big thing about working with young people and particularly people with kind of disadvantaged backgrounds has been the kind of common theme through throughout everything that I've done. And that's led me to, to working in kind of these schools with young people in tough areas and realizing that for me personally, like I think education is the biggest way that you can transform someone's life and, and, and allow them, enable them to kind of come out of, of maybe kind of some entrenched histories of, of deprivation and, and the kind of um, low educational success and that, you know, you can kind of propel them out of that hopefully and, and kind of break that cycle. Um, and yeah, someone looking at what I've done might have thought like, oh, it's all a bit mixed up. Like you don't necessarily know kind of what you want. And yeah, maybe I didn't, but it's all kind of led me and kind of focused me into to what I'm doing now. So yeah, if you don't know what you want, it's not a bad thing. It's not something you need to kind of stress or worry about. More just kind of use it to your advantage and, and try and go and get those varied experiences that ultimately, when you do find what you want, you'll be just so much more well-placed to go out and get that thing or to, to get the interview or whatever it is that, that, that's going to kind of enable you to, to do what you want to do because you've had all those experiences that, that you can then talk about and and ensure that you've yeah developed yourself enough to to warrant that job or, or whatever it is that you're going to do kind of long term yeah no that's very good advice thank you very much thanks thanks for um giving us such an insight as well into to your own path and how that's worked out so well for you in your initial starting point at St George's but no I think that's 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 wonderful so yet again I think the last person I spoke to with is talking about how busy they kept and just trying out different things as well with these alumni these careers week interviews and and I think Matt you're saying exactly the same thing it's about kind of explore, experiencing exploring and not feeling the pressure as well at the same time to, to have to make quick decisions um, and of course, you can always talk to careers uh, department as well. Put my quick plug in for careers that if you are thinking and you are watching this video and you're thinking, I don't know what to do next or I'm getting concerned, then please do come and see us because that's what we're there for. Um, so, OK, so, Matt, I think that's all of my questions that I'm going to ask you. And thank you so much. It's been so amazing to hear about all your diverse um, activities that you've been involved in. And I think it's really inspirational, actually. Uh, to hear about you pushing and, and doing all these, uh, pushing yourself to the max, putting yourself in these situations that you wouldn't necessarily um, think, well, you know, that, that might feel like they might be quite challenging, um, I think, for, for people, but it shows how they pay off and, and how it's been a great benefit to you and, and aligned with all your values as well um, and developed you in the right way for yourself. So, um, yeah, lovely. So th thank you, Matt. And um, thanks, everybody, as well, for, for watching this particular video for Careers Week. And, um, yeah, I can't thank you enough, Matt. Thank you very much.
Thanks a lot.